Welcome back, beautiful people, to another episode of Trey, the Terrible Collector. On today's episode of Trey, the Terrible Collector, we're going to start digging into the Uncanny X-Men Series 3 Toy Biz line. Now, technically, the third series of toys that uh, Toy Biz put out for the X-Men line was uh, repacks and repaints of a lot of the same old figures. So we're going to skip all of those because I don't have time for it. We're gonna dig into the next all new line. Um, and this introduced some really out there characters and some really out there designs. Um, it's where the series started to take a turn um, and really lean into some of the weirdo stuff that the X-Men are known for. Um, it also is where we start to see a lot more of the designs from the cartoon showing through uh, and some of the real uh, wild 90s stuff uh, going on. So in this line, um, you've got it all out here in front of you. Um, today, we are going to be digging into Omega Red. One mutant or a hundred, they shall all bow before the great Soviet Empire. Okay, we have our Omega Red figure. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to show you guys is that up in the top right hand corner, um, we have, first of all, this box is in terrible shape. But up in the top right hand corner, you can kind of make out that we have the villains who are going to appear not only in this series, but the next one as well. Um, the series start to be a lot smaller. Uh, the last one had 11 figures in it, I think, and this series has six. Um, so they started to double up a little bit up here, um, but that's not going to affect really anything. Um, on the back, uh, it says that Omega Red was created during the Cold War and locked in a cryogenic deep freeze because he was too dangerous to control. The Russian super soldier known as Omega Red was later revived and recruited by the ruthless ninja assassins known as the Hand. Under their tutelage, he learned to control his aura of death, an energy field that drains the life force of anyone near him. Combined with his carbonadium tendrils, Omega Red's powers make any battle with him a brush with death. Um, on the back we also see his powers, which say that he has a slide-out tentacle on his left arm, um, and you can twist his waist for like a whipping action. Uh, on the back here we will also see the characters who are going to be available in this line. Um, all that being said, let's go ahead and dig in. Uh, the bubble on this is real discolored, uh, very, very yellow, um, but nothing on the inside appears to be discolored, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we have our trading card, which is from the uh, Skybox X-Men series. Uh, it's got Warpath and like a very cool um, uh, uh, pose there, so we'll, we'll get into that here soon. And here we have... Omega Red. Cool. So I'm actually going to grab just any figure from the last series, too. Uh, the difference in scale between series two and series three is quite stark. Um, he's more shaped like a comic book character in that his muscles are. Uh, exaggerated his his head is a little bit smaller he's very much drawn as a or created the figure is sculpted I'm sorry as he's drawn in the comic so very exaggerated features very exaggerated muscles you can go back go back I spend more time with you um, no bending in the elbows Ooh, maybe no bending in the shoulders either those are not that tight uh, the one on his right hand is just kind of exists. I think it might come out. Nope. It does. Cool. So you can take it off to play like that, or you can put it back on. The one on this hand extends, so that's kind of a cool little display. Um, he's got, uh, much like the Wolverine figures from the last series, he's got a little thumb, oh, and the Sauron as well, he's got a little thumb thing on his back so you can whip him back and forth. Um, very cool sculpt, uh, he looks aggressive and dynamic in a way that 
some of the uh, figures from the previous series didn't. Not real sure what's going on with my light here, so let's fix that. There we go. Um, so here we have Omega Red. Pretty gnarly. Um, really, really excited to start digging into this series, and I, I think he's a great one to start with because it shows how much they've changed from Series 2 to Series 3. Uh, that will bring us to our... So in our last episode, we opened up a whole bunch of X-Force toys, and I wasn't super familiar with Warpath, so I went back and read a little bit about the character while doing the episode, and it turned out that Warpath had been a previous student of none other than the White Queen, Emma Frost. He at one point believed his entire tribe had been massacred by the White Queen and her other students. And it was later revealed that it wasn't them or retconned or, or who's to say. But in that moment, the fact that Warpath didn't strike out and just massacre everyone is a huge testament to what a hero he really is. All right. That is a little bit about the X-Force member known as Warpath. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I think we're going to keep rolling with this. Uh, so we're going to move... Omega Red off to the side here, and let's break out a really bizarre looking figure. This is going to be Strong Guy. Um, Strong Guy was, um, actually I'll just read right from the back. Strong Guy joined X Factor for the simplest of reasons, the regular paycheck. Caring little about the problems between man and mutant kind, he lives instead for the finer things in life. Wine, women, and song. He's not above using his tremendous mutant strength to put those who would criticize his lifestyle in their place. Uh, it says that he has another kind of like twisting action for a quick punch. Um, I imagine it's going to be pretty similar. Um, up in the right-hand corner, you will see not only the X-Men who are going to be in this series, Wolverine, Bishop, uh, and Strong Guy, um, but the X-Men who are going to be in the next one, Professor X, Maverick, Longshot, and Cyclops. Um, we'll get into Maverick a little bit because that's, that's a, a bit of a conundrum, but we'll get there in time. Um, so let's start to tear this guy open. We have a trading card with Professor X in it. This bubble is in a lot better shape than the Omega Red one, so I don't foresee any problems. Um, now, things that I like about strong guy and about this line in general um we start to get into some really weird body sculpts and he is absolutely bizarre like he's kind of hunched over his head is coming out like almost looks like it's coming out of his chest his arms are just enormous like they're the same size as omega red's waist um everything about this dude is huge his legs are a little loose uh and his arms are as well which i think is because when you do this oh yeah kind of like boogies. Excellent. Um, so his legs are a little wobbly, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a problem getting him to stand up. No, that's fantastic. Um, overall, really cool figure, interesting um, design, and a cool choice because all of the rest of the figures up to this point, with the exception of Sauron, have been pretty straightforward body plans. Um, that will bring us now to our second Professor Charles Xavier, the leader of the X-Men, often leads the team from his wheelchair. Um, it's something that has become synonymous with his character over the years. But in fact, he's lost the use of his legs at least three times. The first time was long before he formed the X-Men to a villain named Lucifer. Uh, years later, his body was cloned, and he obviously didn't have the injury anymore, but he lost his legs again in a battle against the psychic entity, the Shadow King. And then, years later, he was duped into thinking that his legs were repaired by someone posing as Magneto, and at uh, the end of the comic event, the villain pulled the rug out from under him, leaving him paralyzed once again. All right, there you have it. A little bit more about Professor Xavier. 
Um, thank you guys so much for coming back week after week. It's really good to have you all here and to be able to share something that's really important to me with everybody out there. Um, please remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have anything you'd like to hear, see, or talk about. Uh, in the meantime, y'all have been wonderful. I have been terrible. We'll see you again soon.